Heavenly Father, we commit this wonderful afternoon session into your hands. Continue to bless us and allow us to know your word and what you want us to learn today. Father, forgive us for the many things that will grab our attention or our focus and help us, Lord, that we can really be obedient to your will and that we can get to know your heartbeat and we commit to you our upcoming election hopefully lord we can select and choose the leader that you want to lead our country there's just so many fake news out there that we sometimes don't know which one is right from wrong but we really need your wisdom father guide us through your word in choosing a righteous leader that will lead our country. Father, we pray for all the voters for our peaceful and orderly election. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Hagios, I'm sorry I don't have a PowerPoint today, um, but I will read to you the verses in 1 John chapter 5. This is uh, the last chapter in our series in the book of 1 John. Are you with me now? If you have your Bibles with you or electronic in your phone, in your app, please read along. Okay, Donna Lee, can you hear me? Do you have your Bible beside you? Marvin has said, please do look at it. Huh? Faith is in the incarnate Son of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his command. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's until verse 5. So from here, if we really truly love God, what's the evidence? We obey His command right if you love your parents you also obey their guidance their advices to you and their corrections okay and their god's command is not burdensome when you love god his word that he wants us to do like love him love others it's not burdensome Okay, let's continue verse 6. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies. Because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testifies. The Spirit the water, the blood, and the tree are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his son. Whoever believes in the son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. Do you already accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you do, you have what? Eternal. You unmute yourself. If you have the Son, you have eternal life. Who doesn't have the Son does not have eternal life. No? Verse 13. 
I write these things to you who believes in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Can you memorize this? 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. How do you approach God? How do you talk to God? Hesed. How do you talk to God? Donnelly. Hagios. You unmute yourself. Not disturbing. <laughs> how do you approach God? Marvin. How do you talk to God? Donnelly. Mm. How do you talk to God? True. Father. <laughs> you talk to God, you approach to God in prayer. Yes, you talk to the Father, God the Father, Lord, ganyan, and then to, when you pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, diba? we approach God in prayer. That if we ask anything according to His will, the Bible says here in verse 14, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, He hears us. Remember, when you pray, God listens. Can you say it with me? Can you type in the chat box? When I pray, God hears my prayer or God listens. Can you type in the chat box so I know you are with me? And verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Oh Lord, thank you for this wonderful assurance. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Verse 16, if you see my brother or sister commit sin, that does not lead to death. You should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those who sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoings is sin. And there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. Okay, remember, huh? God wants us to pray for those people you know that they are doing wrong. Like, why we need to pray for other people? Like, for example, you know, maybe your relative is not yet believing God. He is doing things that does not please God. What you should do? Or you know your brother or your sister is doing something wrong. What should you do? Donnelly, example, what you should do? Has said, if you know someone is doing not good things, Marvin, what you should do? Oh, Shansikati is talking to the wall. Nobody is responding. Hagios. What yes, you sir. should do? Huh? If, what, I sh what you should do if someone is doing wrong. Oh. Yeah, you tell them what they're doing wrong and how to get better. Yeah, but what did you learn from the verse? If you see any brother or sister commit a sin, that does not lead to death. The Bible says, verse 16, you should pray and God will give them life. Okay, Hagios? You need to pray. That's why parents or ch children, student, pray for your teacher. Pray for your parents. If you know your parents may be not treating you well or maybe it's not be being right or what responsible because there's no perfect parents also 
you pray for them. Okay? Are you with me? Can you give me a thumbs up? To those who are listening us live or replay, please do pray for each other. Because what we do when we pray and intercede for other people pleases God. Okay? It helps. Because when we pray, we are helping other people. If you know someone is struggling financially or who is not feeling well, you also pray for them. Okay? And we know, verse 18, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. And one who was born of God keeps them safe. And the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourself from idols. Okay, balik tayo ha. Anyone who is born of God should not continue to sin. If you know that you love God, you have put your trust and faith in Him, you should stop sinning. What is sin? Can you help me define what is sin? Marvin? Hagios? Has said, Donnelly, what anything is sin? Anything that like, doesn't please God. Uh, anything you say, you think, or you do that does not please God. So, can you give me an example of sins? Has said, lying. Thank you. God. Again. By not disobeying God. <laughs> oh, disobedience is also a sin because you know what you ought to do, but you did not do. You disobeyed, diba? And also, if you know what you what you do, ah, first you disobey, diba? If you do do, if you know you need to do this, and but you did not do, it's also sin, and. If you bluntly disobey, it's also sinning. Thank you, Hesed. And lying, yes. What other sin? Marvin, can you give me an example of sin? We pray, no, that our politicians <laughs> that giving us promises will really keep their promises when they will be elected. Or else, they are lying. If they don't commit what they promise. So we need to be careful what we say. Because we lie if we do not speak the truth. We should say, you should preach and share and talk. And then we should also do what we preach or what we promise. It's not nice to, to give promises na that is not um, truthful. No, that's lying. Donnelly, any example of sin? Are you there, Lauren? Okay, so if anyone who is born of God should stop sinning. No, sin is like doing evil things. Like um, watching pornography or watching or what else Cor uh, stealing all those ten commandments no but honestly living in this world sometimes we really commit sin whether you you try your best sometimes you still is tempted to sin like saying bad words hurting people yeah so if you know God, you should stop already from continuous sinning. You should be sin lesser. And the one who was born of God keep 
them safe and the evil one cannot harm them. Ang ganda, no? When you are with God, the enemy cannot harm you. Di ba? And remember, you are victorious in Christ because he who is in you, 1 John 4, 4, is greater than he that is in the world. So if you are struggling with sin, ask God to help you because greater is the Holy Spirit in you to help you overcome and say, no, I will not watch and be addicted and keep on disobeying because I love God. Help me, God. Can you say that? Can you make that as your prayer? Lord, help me to stop sinning and do things that please you. If that's your desire and your prayer, God is happy. Okay, Hagios, are you with me, Hagios, or you're looking something else? So I hope you are focused, huh? So it says here also, we know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true and we are in Him who is true by being in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. With God's help, we will know our shepherd and be guided by Him. Okay? How are you, everyone? The last verse in verse 21, it says there, Dear children, keep yourself from idols. Can you give me an example of idols? Anything you love more than God, that's your idol. For us, no, sometimes if you love money or more than God, that's money becomes your idol. If you love your work more than God, it's your idol. So be careful of something that you spend where you check. Because where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Where you spend more time, that is your idol. So let's try our best to pray that, Lord, before you start your day, spend time with the Lord, that the Lord will guide you in everything. Huh? So allow me to share my slide to you about putting God first because this is our priority in life. Um, continue, Philippians 3.8. Okay. Philippines, Philippians 3 verse 8. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Okay. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Okay, Apostle Paul said this, no? Above all things, he considered things lost comparing to knowing God. So I hope that's your first priority. You should not put anyone else or anything else before the Lord. It should be God first before others. Even family. No? So your devotion to God, your prayer time, your reading of God's word is above all others. Is it clear? Do you have a Bible with you? God first. Instead of your cell phone. Hagios. Okay, has said. What are you busy doing? So second, oh, that's why these are the verses that reminds us that we should put God first. Hagios, please read. Psalm. Psalm 18. Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my shield, and my salvation, my stronghold. Continue. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you only. Okay. So, we need to seek Him. 
approach God in prayer. Lord, this your be your prayer. Lord, show me your ways. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth. Teach me for you are my Savior and my Lord. I hope make this your prayer, ha? Huh? Uh, young people, kasi in this world, there's just so many things that will tempt us to do this. Oh, this is the right way. But you have to listen from the Lord. Proverbs 16.3 ha has said, can you read, unmute yourself in Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6. Commit, unmute yourself, we cannot hear. Commit your word to the Lord and your plans will be established. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Okay, when you approach God in prayer, you tell God everything, your plans, Lord, this is my goal, this is my work, this is my problem, this is my desire, and trust God to guide you. Do not lean on your own understanding. Ask God to make your path straight and your future, your daily wins successful huh every day donnelly are you there so make it clear to the lord huh that's your first priority when you approach god in prayer just prioritize him once you prioritize god everything comes second then third fourth fifth or second if you are married na, but not all, all of you are still young people and children, you don't you do not have yet your lifetime partner, your spouse. So emit we will emit this second part. Next, you should put priority to your family, your parents instead of spouse, parents, and brothers and sisters. You sh after God, you prioritize family. In case there are conflict, no? Ah, we have family gathering and then there's another invitation. So you say, I'm sorry, I have family outing, family dinner. Sorry, I cannot make it. But if there's already prior commitments, then you just explain and make it short so you can go back and be with your family, okay? So, first is God. That's your priority. And then, everything you entrust to God in prayer and help pray also for your family. Second, huh? Prioritize. Second priority is your family. Okay. Next. So, and next is school. As a student, you need to prioritize your studies over what? <laughs> over other things, no? So make sure you uh, organize. Don't neglect if you have homework, if you need to uh, study for exam. But if you are working na, are you working na Marvin? Not yet. So if you are if you're working someday, you also prioritize your work because your employer pay you, diba? No. Okay. So next, after that, it's also good to serve other people, like help, reach out. So what we learn in First John chapter five, we approach God. And we know that he hears us. So in all our priorities, we set time to pray. And all our priorities will, or our life will be in order. Okay? 
Can you please read this one? Acts 20, 28. Um, Donna Lee. Donna Lee, can you read? Pay careful attention. Lauren, is your audio okay? Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. We care for the church of God and sustain his own blood. Yes. So, God also wants us to care for other people. Yes, we love our family first. God, our family, our studies. And also, God wants us to take care of other people so that they will get to know God. Okay? And that everything will be <clears throat> all right, no? So God wants us to care for others by praying for them also and reaching out to them and helping them. Okay, may I ask a practical question? As a student, what? how do you make your life organized? Can you please read uh, Hagios? Hmm. Or answer first before I show you my answer. Set a routine, plan your, plan your, when you're going to do your homework, set times for when you want to relax and when you want to do your work. Yeah, like that. So make sure you have routine, structure. Is that what you're trying to say, right? So, okay. Please read this one. That's correct, no? Organize your daily life with morning routines. I hope you still make it organized talaga. Once you wake up in the morning, you spend time with God first. Read God's word and prayer. And then fix your bed. Attend your classes. by Before attending class, probably you also drink your um, milk or vitamins like that. And... Uh, Ano, presentable naman, no? You are not wearing pajama when you attend your online class. And set a study schedule. Start your project as soon as it is given to you. Don't beat the deadline na cramming. Set third, label and put color code on your materials per subject, per items, and your things. Has said, be organized, no? That make sure your notebook, this is notebook for what subject like that. Gathering necessary supply, list down. Okay? I'll show you one of my, I don't know if you can see. Can you see this one? I think I try, I check huh? if I press the share sound. Okay. I show you his morning routines. His name is Jim Quick. Okay, you check it out. What his morning routine? Can you hear? Hello, Mind Valley community. My name is Jim Quick with Quick Learning, and I'm here as always to help you to learn quickly. One of the questions in the community that we get is, Jim, what do you do every single morning to jumpstart your brain for greater success, greater levels of focus, greater levels of productivity? So I'm gonna walk you through my morning routine. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I have a process to remember my dreams. Now you're like, Jim, why do you wanna remember your dreams? The reason why is often as you spend your day learning and working to solve problems, solve problems in your work and your life and everything else, when you sleep, your mind doesn't stop. Your unconscious mind is still working on those problems and you come up with incredible insights and solution. The challenge is, is in the morning, most people don't remember their dreams. So we teach a process on how to do that. The second thing I do after I wake up is I get out of bed and I make my bed. You're like, Jim, why is that good for your brain? Two reasons. Number one, clean environment is important for you. Like, you know, when you clean off your desktop, you clean up your office, your bedroom, you have a clearer mind. The second reason why is I want to start my day with success because how you do anything is how you do everything. So you start with excellence. Take two minutes, make your bed. And it's really great because when you come home at the end of the day, you come back full circle back to success. The third thing I do is I drink a lot of water. Your brain is mostly water, 80% water, and a lot of people are dehydrated. You use so much water, and it's so important for your brain to be hydrated. The challenge is you lose a lot of water when you're sleeping, so I super hydrate first thing in the morning. 
Then what do I do? I brush my teeth. You're like, Jim, why do you brush your teeth? How's that good for your brain? What you do is you brush your teeth with your opposite hand. It's been shown that by using your opposite hand to eat or to brush your teeth, as your body moves, your brain grooves. As you brush your teeth with your opposite hand, it actually creates more neural connections inside your brain. So the next thing I do is I do a deep breathing exercise. The other thing besides hydration that's good for your brain is oxygen. A lot of people get tired and they have brain fog and what do they do with their mental fatigue? And I would say the number one thing is get oxygen in your body. And here's the thing, your brain is only 2% of your body weight on average, but it consumes 20% of the nutrients and the oxygen. So it's so important to do deep breathing exercises. We talk about that in our programs also as well. What's the next thing I do in my morning routine? I make myself some tea. I make what I call a brain tea. It has go to cola, ginkgo biloba, it has lion's mane, it has some essential fatty acids that are there. Really good ingredients that boost my focus and my memory. Now, as I'm drinking the tea, what am I doing? I'm actually journaling. Because if you want to boost your brain power, it's important to take notes. And I do a whole process where I teach you the best ways of taking notes and making notes to be able to plan out your day and also to be able to write the things that you're most grateful for. So I go through this gratitude process in my journal because I feel like your brain really thrives on gratitude. Because if you can't appreciate the things that you already have, you're not gonna be given the things that you really want. So why do I focus on gratitude first thing in the morning? Well, I have my vision board and then my goals, everything that I want, but I also have a gratitude board, the things that I'm most grateful for in my life. And if you wanna feel instant gratitude, just count all the things in your life that you have that money can't buy. Gratitude is also good for your brain. There was a cover story on the cover of Time Magazine on these super nuns who are living 80, 90 and above. And I want to find how, where's their longevity coming from? Half of it had to do with their gratitude, emotional faith. The other half had to do with their lifelong learners. So those two things combined are very, very powerful. After that, I'm drinking my tea, I'm writing in my journal, because a lot of geniuses write in journals, right? Leonardo da Vinci, Einstein, Marie Curie, all these journals, and they want to do these studies, say, are geniuses writing in journals because they're geniuses, or is it the opposite? It's because they're writing in journals that they become these incredible geniuses of their field. When I'm done drinking my brain tea and writing my journal, the next thing I do is I do some just morning exercises. This is not my exercises for the day, but three or four minutes of high intensity workout to kind of get your heart beating going. Because here's the thing, whatever's good for your heart is usually good for your head. Because when I'm getting my heartbeat going, what's happening is I'm getting more blood flow to my brain and more oxygen, and that's very, very important. So what do I do next? I make my brain power smoothie. And you're like, Jim, what's a brain power smoothie? There are certain foods that are really great for your brain. And I teach people how to memorize these foods. And what we do is I just put them all in a blender. So certain foods like, like blueberries, right? I call them brain berries. There are things like avocado, very good for the brain also as well. Obviously hydration, we're gonna talk about all those ingredients in another video. So as I'm drinking my brain power smoothie, what am I doing? I'm reading, right? 20, 30 minutes a day of dedicated reading because leaders are readers. And you're like, Jim, I can't read a, a book a week because the average person reads only about one or two books a year. But the CEO reads about four to six books a month, right? So you want to get to about a book a week. So remember, first you make your habits and then your habits make you. Design the first hour a day to be brain friendly and you'll win the rest of the day. Okay. So I hope we will make our routines, no? So as Christian, our first and primary routine when we wake up in the morning, for him, he remember his dream. It's also good, no? To recall and also thank God for another life. Gratitude. I like that. And pray, no? Pray to God talaga and intercede to so many people's lives that you know that needs prayer. We all need prayer. Shansi Kati needs your prayer. Your parents need your prayer. Your brothers and sisters, your classmates, your teachers, no? All of us need each other to pray for one another. So when you, again, praying is helping. So let's prioritize our relationship with God. And then your exercise, you're fixing your bed, you're boosting your, you brush your teeth, you sing your dominant hand or less dominant. Less dominant. If you are right-handed, you use your left to brush teeth to stimulate your brain power. No? 
So these are just tips because Jim Quick is a like um brain power coach or something like that. He likes to inform, teach people how to maximize uh their brain by reading books. So again, I like that term. Readers are Ay, wala man kayo naglisten. Readers are leaders. So let's read God's word at least 15 to 20 minutes, di ba? And then make journals. What God is speaking to you through his word and write it down. So you will not forget. Remember to memorize verses. What God is speaking to you. Because God can use you to share to other people. Okay, if you know God, you will obey his commands and his command is not burdensome. So as you read, if you know God is speaking to you in this verse, you write it down and submit to God to obey his word and the devil will free from you. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so I think our topic today is very practical. So do not have any idols, no? So make sure you have no other gods before me. God doesn't want us to love others more than we love him. Okay, so these are practical tips how we can focus on God. So make sure these are verses that we can be encouraged please read has said first corinthians 9 26 wait there first corinthians verse 9 to 36 therefore i do not run uh what's this again aimlessly aimlessly i do not fight like i am Beating the air. Beating the air. Matthew chapter 35, verse 23. His, his master said to him, Well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. Over a little, I will send you over much. Enter into the joy of God. Our master. Okay. When we put God as our priority, God will give us clarity, focus, and self-discipline. Because as we, we prioritize him, God will speak to us through his word, through impressing what he wants us to do, and how we should study like that. So we are not aiming aimlessly no and someday god will we can hear him say well done okay next our your priority is your family donnelly please read first corinthians 9 24 first corinthians 9 24 do you not know that in the race all the runners only one receives the prize run in such a way to take the prize no continue marvin maybe donnelly's background is noisy sige matthew 6 19 to 21 19 and 21 do not matthew 19 verse 21 do not do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Yes. So make sure that you prioritize God no? and relationship because this will last forever. So let's reduce clutter, distraction so that we can have more time with our family. Yes. And God and family. Okay. Sure. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way to take the prize. No, continue, Marvin. Maybe Donnelly's background is noisy. Sige. 
Matthew 6, 19 to 21. 19 and 21. Do not. Matthew 19, verse 21. Do not. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Yes. So make sure that you prioritize God, no? And relationship because this will last forever. So let's reduce clutter, distraction so that we can have more time with our family. Yes. And God and family. Okay? So... Any unneeded supplies. Okay, these are things, no? That you need to segregate, declutter, and maybe help others with what you don't use, uh, things that you don't need anymore. Or maybe you need, but you know you have enough already. What else? Other things. If not things, what other things that you need to declutter so you will have more time to be with your, to be with God, to be with your family, with your time. Anyone else? Less time to watch teleseria te or movie or less time to play <laughs> or something like that. But Talaga ha, as a student, as a student, you have to prioritize also your studies. Ha? After God, then your loved ones to spend time with them, like you have devotion together, prayer time together as family, or bonding time together. Then you also need to really study. Ha? Prioritize your studies. Is that clear, has said? Donnelly, Lauren. Marvin, okay, I think that ends our sharing today. Remember what's our memory verse that we can re um, that we can apply first John chapter 5 verse 14. Remember, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. We approach God in prayer that if we ask anything, According to his will, if it is God's will that you are praying, Lord, help me to love you. Help me to take away the negative feelings. Help our family to love the Lord. Bless us, O Lord, like that. Anything, ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He listens to us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask of him. So these two verses, don't forget, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Is that clear? Clear. Yes. We have confidence in approaching God. But whatever we ask in his will, he hears us. And when he... When we know that he hears us of whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask. Wow. These two verses really give us the confirmation, the confidence, the guarantee that God listens to our prayers. So let's, why not, no? Maximize our privilege as a child of God that we spend more time in prayer. Because surely the Lord listens to us. And that wonderful talaga verses of 1 John chapter 5. No, If tonight before you sleep, read it with your family. Because those who are in Christ will stop sinning. And those you know who are sinning, you need to pray for them and intercede for them. Because that's your way of helping them. So that you can have more time to pray, you should prioritize your relationship with God. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then, if you love God, you enjoy reading His Word, journaling, give thanks, part of your morning routine. And second command is, love others as you love yourself. Loving your family, your studies, and your friends, no? by reaching out to them. 
to pray, ha? Huh? When we pray, we address it to our Heavenly Father. Okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have the confidence through Christ Jesus, what He did for us on the cross so that He can be the mediator between us from you there will be no separation there will be no barrier we can approach you anytime in confidence that whatever we ask in prayer believing you that we are praying according to your will you hear us and you listen to us lord we pray for our situation that we will not have any more pandemic by faith, Lord. But if we still have, help us be cautious, keep us healthy, keep us away from this viruses and we pray for our upcoming election talaga lord we pray for our voters filipino voters all over the world and in our country itself bless our komelek lahat mga that we will have preparation that it will be orderly and peaceful election and that we will be able to have a leader who is really appointed by you lord and that he will do do serve our country well oh father we are living in the last days help us be faithful help us to organize our life help us to keep be prayerful and that we will be of help to many people we will continue to shine our light wherever we are yes lord thank you for the talents and good health that you have given to marvin hagios hesse donnelly lauren jj janjan danica lord charles camille clarence caleb we also miss caleb we also miss trisha jastra chebar lord pray for those who are not here with us today uh, keep us all where, where we are that we will not neglect you we also pray for vernice Denise, Precious, Kaiser. Oh Lord, thank you so much. Audrey, Gab. I hope, Lord, that whoever friends we know, family members, please pray for them. Pray for your cousins, for your aunties, uncle, uncle, ama. Oh Lord, we pray for our family that we will stop sinning have continually but we will say no to sin and do things that pleases you your commands are not burdensome help us lord to obey them gladly and serve you joyfully hallelujah forgive us lord of our sins this all we ask and pray in jesus name amen and thank you has said marvin i hope you continue to approach god in prayer huh because you already believe in god and that you approach god talk to him like a friend like your papa Bye. okay thank you donnelly god bless everyone hey, donnelly are we, friends pala? are we friends pala?